Hi, this is Jim McConnell, coming to you from Light Elkins headquarters in Redmond, Oregon. I am with Liz Morris from the Nail Hub. It's been an honor. Oh, thank you. This is so fun to be here. And I love filming these collaborative videos because Jim is a wealth of knowledge in the nail industry. I will never stop saying that. And especially when you're coming to him for gel knowledge, it is absolutely amazing as a nail technician to have access to this kind of information. So we are continuing our conversation about gels, the gel family. And also now we're gonna get into kind of more details about gel formulations, right? Right. Okay. Now, as you guys might have seen already, um, Jim and I did do a hybrid gel video. We did a huge deep dive into that topic, and so I really recommend you guys watch that as well as the first part of this video series. Um, but we thought we'd revisit this to, you know, kind of, again, clarify some of the things that seem to be a little bit confusing in the industry of gels, and also just kind of go through some of those ingredients that people can use to identify what type of product they're working with, and then also getting into, you know, what do those ingredients do at certain concentrations, where are the risks involved, where the propensity involved, and, uh, and kind of just give you guys a good rundown of, of what we're looking at here. Sounds great. Okay, cool. So one of the things we thought we would do is start with hybrids and maybe in order of concentration. Yeah. What some of the cons uh, what some of the ingredients might be that constitute a hybrid gel polish. Right. So in order of concentration, and this is generally speaking, mm -hmm. we're going to have a acrylic copolymer. And then you'll have monomers. So some of the monomers that we commonly find in the so-called hybrid gel polish lines, it's going to be Ema, Iboa, which is isoformal acrylate, right? And then you might have uh, isoformal methacrylate, iso, iso, or no, methacrylate. All these fun long words. Um, I'm trying to stay out of your. Yeah, stay out of my territory. I'm trying to stay out of there. I'm gonna put a line down the middle of this board. And then we're gonna decide, we're gonna see some alarmers. Okay. All right, it's that way. Because you might have more than one, you might just have one. Okay. Okay. And then photo initiators. Again, okay. maybe more than one. Mm -hmm. And pigments. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Now, if this is an order of concentration, that also follows along with what someone would see on an ingredient list, correct? Because correct. ingredients are listed in order of highest concentration to lowest concentration. Until you get to the 1% level. And anything beyond 1% can be randomized. Yeah. So this is really cool for you guys to know, just if you were looking at ingredients on a label or on an SDS, just looking at these in this, in this order, basically, gives you a good idea of what type of product this is without knowing exactly what it is. Correct. Very cool. Yeah. And then while we're on that subject, acrylic copolymers and then hema, iboa, isoformin, methacrylate, those typically are what create the ability to soak this gel polish oxygen. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, so that combination alone, mm -hmm. and the idea that your oligomers is one of the lower concentration of, of the ingredients. Okay, so more monomers, less oligomers. Correct. Okay, all right. And also one of the things that I thought would be kind of cool to go back to is, so this is an example of that copolymer that we were talking about that gets dissolved in these monomers inside of this formulation. Right. Okay. One other thing that we didn't bring up that we can't bring up is sometimes they might contain a solvent. Mm, okay. So we could put ethyl acetate or another solvent. And that could be somewhere between the first ingredient and the fifth ingredient. Mm. It would be pretty common. And what are solvents used for? I mean, we know that we dissolve copolymers in monomers now, but why do we add solvents to the mix as well? The solvent will also dissolve the copolymer. Okay. So nail lacquer contains copolymers, nitrocellulose oftentimes, and then other types of copolymers with different names. And so um, they're dissolved in solvents, and then that solvent concentration, usually a blend of solvents in the nail polish, that will control the evaporation rate, which makes it easier or more difficult to apply. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. 
And then obviously our photo initiators down here is what makes our photo column like we talked about last time. We got the photo initiator and you have no photo column. Awesome. Good to know. And the photo initiators can be selected based on the curing length. So if you're trying to cure at 400 nanometers, 405, 420, right. that's going to require certain photo initiators. If you're looking at pure UV, that's a different set of photo initiators. Yep. Or it could still be some of the ones that cure those longer wavelengths. Absolutely. And nowadays we have also hybrid plants that are able to cure the full range for any of those types of gels, right? Correct. Awesome. Yeah, good to know. And one of the other questions before we get into all of our other gels besides hybrids that I was asking you earlier was the conversation of acrylates, right? So when we're talking about gels and we're getting to kind of the hybrid gel category, we're getting to the other gel, you know, pure gel, true gel, whatever you want to call it category. One of the confusing parts about it is that when we start throwing in words like acrylates, polymers, monomers, I think that's where people get a little con confused about, are we talking about the same product still? Is it a part of this product? How does that fit in? So when people are talking about acrylates, what part of this is the acrylate portion of the formula? Can you use a different color? Yeah. Do you want to borrow my paint? No, I'm going white. <laughs> okay. okay, so we can look at, I'm going to use a little bracket on this side. Those items there, so the acrylic copolymers, the hema, the iboa, the isoform with acrylate, the ligamers, and there's a whole plethora of other monomers that fall in this same hema, iboa, isoform with acrylate range. So those are all acrylates, okay. including the acrylic copolymer. Those are acrylate copolymers or methacrylate copolymers or a blend of acrylate and methacrylate copolymers. Okay. okay. So when you're talking about that, if someone has an allergy to acrylates and methacrylates, yes. it probably does not include a copolymer because that's polymerized, it's a plastic, it's like saying I'm allergic, I'm allergic to a milk jug. Right. I don't know anybody who's allergic to milk jug. Right or an acrylic uh, solvent piece of plastic. Right. Right. So plexiglass would be an acrylic copolymer, and I don't know if it's allergic to plexiglass. Right. It might exist. I just don't think. Right. But the rest of those are all liquids, and as a result, those liquid acrylates and methacrylates can generate allergies. Right. Right. Okay. The higher the concentration of monomer in a system, the higher the propensity for an allergic reaction. Absolutely. Because very seldom are people allergic to the ligamers. The more allergic, the smaller molecular weight. Right. Modern. Yeah, ligamers being a bigger molecule, it's di more difficult for it to penetrate the skin, get into the bloodstream, and start causing that reaction through your body. Or the, yeah, the proteins in your body. Yeah. Identifying yeah. what's trying to get into it. Right. And then causing the swelling, the bleeding, the pus, yeah. and the flushing out. Yeah. That immune system response absolutely exactly. okay cool so that's good for people to know you know if they're if they're going you know into the topic of maybe of a client that has developed an acrylate allergy or they're concerned about products that they've had sensitivities to in the past it's important to understand you know what concentrations we're talking about first of these products because that also makes a big difference huge yeah huge difference yeah and they may also not be allergic to every single acrylate in the system. It may be a very specific piece of that acrylate family that we're talking about. Correct. Like okay. if, if, a, if a dermatologist does an acrylic panel on a patient, mm -hmm. and let's say you're the patient, they'll put it on your forearm, they'll put it on your back, but they will test anywhere between four and as many as 30 acrylates and methacrylates right. in liquid form. And then you might only show a, a severe allergy to one or two of those yeah. out of maybe 40. And so if that's the case, you just want to avoid those raw materials right. in your system. Right. And uh, and it's good to understand which one of those is the actual, you know, the one that's causing the problem because you don't want to just get a generic answer like you have an acrylate allergy and not know which part of the puzzle is actually the, the, the one that's causing the problem. So some of those physicians will actually tell you you're allergic to this acrylate and that methacrylate and those are the only two, or these are only three. Mm -hmm. Some of them will say you're allergic to all acrylates or methacrylates, right. which may or may not be the case. Okay. And then obviously when we're talking about, um, you know, in the past we were talking about the importance of looking at bound options of HEMA instead of unbound HEMA, right? So looking at HEMA monomer that then has been encapsulated inside of the formula rather than it just be, you know, a monomer out there on its own. 
just to clarify that for you guys, you know, I highly recommend you go back and watch the video that Jim and I did about HEMA, especially when we get into bound versus unbound HEMA, because it does make a difference in the formulation and it does make a difference for that propensity for a product like HEMA to, you know, to have an effect on you, you know, and not everybody has a reaction to these ingredients. Yeah. It's highly dependent on the person and their body chemistry and their immune system. But if you want to really mitigate a lot of these risks with some of the products that are out there and you're trying to shop responsibly for great products for your clientele, I feel like this kind of information is exactly the kind of stuff you want in your arsenal when you're out there shopping and investing. Crucial. And you might have two different systems where one system is like a hybrid system that you can apply on 95% of your clientele. Yep. But you might have some of those clientele that really has an allergy to these and sometimes maybe a serious allergy where you want to go with a different type of gel polish system Absolutely. that doesn't contain high concentrations of some of the monomers that they might get allergic to. Mm -hmm. So then bridging over from hybrids into all of our other kind of more, I don't know what you want to call them, pure gels, true gels, non-hybrid gels, are all of these ingredients present in all of the other gels that we see outside of the hybrid system? They can be. Okay. They at varying concentrations. All right. Okay. Yeah. So what would that look like for this list? You see the ligamers? That would be on the top of your list. All right, so ligamers would be the first ingredient on your list. All right, so we're already dealing with bigger molecules. Larger molecules to begin with, kind of like we are with the acrylic copolymer. Right, and our main ingredient in this level of gel. Right. What about the next thing? What are you going to do? Because that's thick, viscous, yeah. liquid like this, right. Right? right? And so we have to thin that down. We're going to use a monitor. Yes. So it could contain some Ibola. Mm -hmm. It could contain some Ema. Okay. It could contain some isomorphic okay. or other monitors. Okay. All right. All right, so we'll do HPMA here. Yeah. And then you can put down, say, Ibola. Mm -hmm. L or and. Uh, Iboma. So Iboma is the abbreviation for isoborn on the back of it. Okay. Okay. Um, and then because you put some hema in there and some HDMA, Iboma, Iboma, you might have some acrylic copolymers. Okay. Spelling all these long words is so fun. Question mark behind that because it may or may not be in there. If it is in there, you use a lower concentration of Okay. Okay. You'll need a photo initiator. Right. Otherwise, we don't have Or two. Yeah. So that's needed to make it full of price. And then how about pigments? And pigments. Pigments. Yeah. OK. So similar concept, similar ingredient list, mm -hmm. but the ratios are different. So you're going to have a lot of different monomers in there, some of the oligomers. Um, at a lower concentration, photo initiators from that really low concentration as well. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, this, because of the high concentration of monomers, could lead to more allergies. Right. Could. Could. It's a possibility, depending on how it's applied, how well it's cured, and again, mm -hmm. the person who's buying it. Yeah, and I like the way you explain it, which is, you know, for 95 or maybe more percent of your clients, Something like this is going to be perfectly fine, and you're never going to run into a situation. 95, 98, 99%. Right. But for those clients that have, you know, developed sensitivities to monomers that we use in our, our nail products, and it's not just gels. I mean, monomers exist in almost all nail products, yeah. if not all of them. Um, so it's good to know that you can look for something like this that is an alternative. And because of this heavy oligomer concentration, and also if we're talking about bound versions of HEMA or HPMA or any of this, you're going to be really mitigating the risk that someone does develop a reaction to these products. Correct. Yeah. 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 So differences between hybrids and pure gels, 100% gel, yeah. all gel type formulations. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is great info. I hope this has been helpful for you guys to understand what to look for when you're out there shopping. and. Whether these ingredients are listed on the actual product or the packaging, I mean, Jim also, we went through SDS sheets and how you should be able to request SDS sheets from any nail manufacturer that's out there. Don't be afraid to investigate what's in your product. And now I feel like you guys will have a much better handle on what these things mean 
And what do we mean when we talk about all of the different parts that make up photopolymers? Photopolymers. It's a great family of, of gels. Yeah, awesome. And it is our life. So yeah. it's a good thing. Yeah, and I want to continue to be able to use all these amazing products. So I'm very invested in knowing all this stuff, and I hope you guys are as well. Um, thank you so much for having me, Jen. This has been awesome. I really enjoy these collaborative videos. And I hope you guys will continue to watch Jim's Chemist Corner, follow his channel, follow my Elegance HQ. I mean, everything you guys do here with your company is just absolutely amazing. And I really encourage everyone who's watching to continue to take, you know, control over your knowledge and your education as a professional in this industry. The more you know. Absolutely. Also, I want to encourage, encourage you, strongly encourage you to follow this Vanilla. So she offers a plethora of information, so much detail, you share the wealth of knowledge that you have that you've obtained over uh, over a decade. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I really enjoy giving back to the community that has you know given me so much joy in my life, and uh, and this is awesome. I couldn't I couldn't ask for a greater opportunity. So thank you, you so much. Again. We absolutely will. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.